Hello, my name is Tanya Taylor Rubenstein, and I'm the founder of a company called Story Leader. And we are a consciousness first uh, story and business incubator. And we help people write memoirs, solo performances, and grow story centered businesses. So they're thriving. So, what I wanted to speak about this evening, my evening, my time here in Santa Fe, New Mexico, is the profound relevancy of the heroine's journey. And I want to break that down a little bit. And the first thing I want to say is we've compartmentalized um, the heroine's journey and the hero's journey um, because we're such a binary culture. And this is a byproduct of, you know, thousands of years of patriarchy. And when I speak of the heroine's journey, one of the first things I want to say is that it's relevant not only for women, but for men um, to move off the binary. Women have taken heroes' journeys. That's been the default in the culture. Um, and, and, and there's a beautiful place for the hero's journey in writing and in life. But the more marginalized story and process has been the heroine's journey. And that's what we're disconnected from. And, and we're both as human beings and, 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 and uh, what, whatever is happening environmentally on, on the planet, politically, as well as in our art and writing, I believe very strongly in the necessity of all genders reclaiming the heroine's journey or claiming it. Because the hero's journey, if you're familiar with that structure, you know, is very much about the outer journey, um, the journey uh, of, of conquest, the journey of conquest of one's soul, but it's often a very outer focused journey. Think Raiders of the Lost Ark, think actually most, um, most films, uh, most books that are that are very story based journey based um, is dominated by the hero 's journey and nothing wrong with that it 's an outer journey it 's a journey to self actualization in the world often by going on a kind of um, adventure and meeting monsters and having uh, you know uh, benevolent forces come and support us along the journey but the heroine 's journey structure is is a reclamation of an, and a descent into the inner journey to really experience the fullness of our being, not only on the outer, but on the inner. So I wanted to break down uh, some of these, um, these, these aspects of the heroine's journey and then talk about their relevancy in our lives, in our writing, in how we create and structure our businesses, how we live, how we lead in the world. So the first one, um, and I think again, this is very relevant for all genders, especially in Western culture. Uh, the first part of the um, heroine's journey is a separation from the feminine. And simply by being raised in a patriarchal culture, and when I speak about patriarchy, I'm not putting down men. Patriarchy is a culture that's built around um, and favors the masculine. And there are two aspects to the masculine, of course, the uh, sacred masculine, which is necessary, and that's about integration in all of us, but it's the toxic and wounded masculine that so much of Western culture has become dominated by. And, and it's the urge to expand no matter what, the separation from the feminine, no matter what our individual familial stories, which may absolutely validate that um, and, and, and validate the patriarchal uh, reasoning of, of, of the fact that there's a hierarchy and the masculine not only dominates, but is just viewed as more important, more essential. There's a separation from the feminine in ourselves, but it's gonna happen in the culture, even if we had very conscious parents and family, um, because these are in the collective consciousness. These are archetypes. There's an identification with the masculine, and this is very much, right, the way we learn to do, and we value doingness, and, and there's reward for doingness over beingness. And it's, again, the reward is for the outer journey, the quest, 
the hero's journey, the slaying dragons, whether it's in business or as artists or um, whatever we do, there's a, a over identification with that part of ourselves. And there is a soul loss that happens, a disconnection from our soul when we're heavily identified with the masculine. And then of course, very similar to the hero, uh, hero's journey, there are the road of trials. And this is no human being can, can escape um, this aspect of the journey we wouldn't want to. It's where our, our experience is coming from. It's where we collect our stories. It's what makes our journey unique to us, no, many, no matter how many have journeyed before us. Um, and then there's the illusory boon of success. So I think about this in my own life. Uh, in, my, in my early 30s, I had a lot of sort of the early boon of success in this place. When I think back on it, financial success, I had a book published, I was featured in Oprah's magazine, I was, you know, featured in a lot of press. Uh, I had a, um, uh, a show of mine uh, done one night uh, off Broadway. And Right after this, actually, um, there, uh, there was a kind of, oh, this is a kind of, oh, is this all there is kind of moment. And if we're staying more identified with the masculine, we may push past those feelings and keep pushing ourselves. But there is a sense of, um, not that there's anything wrong with our work or with feeling success, but if we're, if we're, cut off still from the feminine, it won't be enough, right? So one way to move with this uh, is to sort of stay on the path, like I'll need more and more and more and more and more success, more outer success, more validation, more money, more whatever the goodies are, right? But the, the and this is what Western culture actually teaches us to do. And I do think there's some something in the traditional hero's journey, which is very much about pull up your bootstraps, keep going, keep going whether or not you're feeling fulfilled. Um, and, but, but this, in the heroine's journey, this is where it's like, it is a very much like, is this there, all there is moment? And there's a sense, a deep sense of spiritual longing, of longing for something more, whether or not we know there's something more. And I don't mean spiritual and like a detached or new agey way, I mean, there's, there's a sense of wanting to connect with something deeper. And like Persephone's tale, this is where the heroine chooses rather than to keep pushing through and pummeling through. And if you think about not only patriarchy, but capitalism, corporatization, things that are really harming life on earth and the planet, it's like a pushing through no matter what. The heroine in her wisdom listens to this call and decides to dive deeper. And like Persephone, this is the descent into the underworld. This is the descent and actually the activation and beginning of our deeper, of our deeper journey. And I always think it's very interesting because the hero's journey at the end is very much about individuation in many ways and returning to the tribe with the elixir, which it's wonderful to serve and, and give back, not putting down the hero's journey, but, but there's a different outcome here for the heroine. The heroine's journey is ultimately about her spiritual sovereignty, her deeper, um, her deeper connection uh, with not only the divine within, but an integration with her humanity. So that's, that's where she's going here. So, so next there's a descent um, and, and there's a longing to reconnect with the feminine. And don't forget, she's separated from the feminine. We're separated from the feminine. It's a collective story as well as an individual story. The stories are what make it wonderful. You know, this is why we write stories. We want to hear each other's stories because we're each on these universal uh, journeys, whether we're identifying them or not, or we're avoiding them, or we're pushing through them, or we're denying them. On a deep soul level, both the hero's journey and heroines are relevant to all people, regardless of gender, because if we are uh, deeply in touch with ourselves, we're, we're each longing to heal and integrate all parts of ourselves 
the masculine and the feminine and come into integration. So this is really where she uh, or he connect with the underworld, uh, go feel the pain, the trauma, the separation. It's a real inner walk into the unknown where like the hero's journey, there may be godmothers and godfathers, benevolent, uh, benevolent energy, energy and being supporting, but there's also going to be monsters. There's also going to be devils. There's also going to be, we're going to have to meet all these aspects of self in this underworld. And this is why it is such a critical, um, uh, critical uh, step for meeting our wholeness. You know, Carl Jung talks a lot about the archetypes, these same archetypes we're working with. And if we're only working with the outer world archetypes, the hero, you know, the hero's journey, the overcoming all obstacles, very much through the, the so own sense of will, and that's where we stop. And I think that's a huge issue in our culture. And that's where we stop we miss this incredible journey of richness to who we are in the deeper spaces, again, of our souls. Again, in terms of thinking of indigenous culture, going on the heroine's journey is nothing less than having a, experiencing a profound soul retrieval. Sharing it in our writing, in our speaking, in our storytelling means we don't just have an adventurous, engaging, entertaining tale. It means we have a transmission of wisdom from our souls. Now, in, the, in Maureen Murdoch and those who have uh, written about the heroine's journey, they say this is where they, you, there's a healing of the mother-daughter split. I want to change this because I think the gender binary is uh, prob problematic uh, because it pushes men away, perhaps. Um, and I'm inviting you in. And so I would say absolutely the mother-child split. And uh, I work with so many men as well as women and have over many decades on their stories. And what I can say is, uh, and if I'm speaking to you and you're a man, I acknowledge that there's just as much pain in men, particularly men who are sensitive, men who have stepped into deeper leadership, deeper um, creativity, deeper artistry from the wounded feminine in the culture. And when a woman, as well as a man in the culture doesn't go on their deeper journey, uh, doesn't heal their own disassociation, separation from the feminine, doesn't dive in to find the shadow pieces, which is what we retrieve on the heroine's journey and integrate them, then tremendous uh, harm is done to the son, uh, as well as the daughter. And this is how patriarchy repeats itself to women who are violated by men in the patriarchy. Of course, when they have sons, they violate their sons, violate their daughters in different ways. So this is, this is why, um, to me, being in touch with the heroine's journey in our writing, in our storytelling, leading with it in how we uh, uh, walk in the world and do business is about offering a new way in a world that so desperately needs to shift into new personal, collective, and global narratives, right? I mean, the planet itself and humanity is at stake right now. Um, so just wanted to say that this is the healing of the mother-child split. Um, and then next step is as that comes into integration, there's a healing of the wounded masculine. And again, off the binary, yes, we women have the wounded masculine. In a patriarchal culture that values the masculine, of course, and, and to me, this is very much a shadow archetype of like uh, first generation feminine, feminism. Um, I, I, a lot of women, um, and, and it's still happening on the planet, we see it. A lot of women uh, believe that they could only get their power and their sort of piece of the pie uh, on the planet uh, by be becoming the wounded masculine, by following paradigms 
and, and systems and becoming part of them that don't work. Now, this is certainly not every ambitious woman, certainly not every high level leader, but you know, you can, can't generalize, but this, is a, this was a deep, um, while there was a liberation and it was a necessary step in our collective evolution, the healing now is us all acknowledging the wounded masculine in each of us and our ability to do harm again regardless of gender and 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 i do love um, where we're going with this so then there is an integration of the masculine and as as women as men uh to me the way i think of masculine is sacred structure in the world if the divine feminine is is uh the heart connection to the heart uh connection to to the love to benevolence that is amorphous and becomes a wounded shadow aspect of the feminine if it's at not actually held in sacred containers by the masculine. And I should say more than shadow, I might say it becomes ineffective. So ultimately, the reason we're in this journey is to have integration of the feminine and masculine. Jung would call it the divine marriage. And when we're able to write our stories, integrating the heroine's journey, whether you're writing a memoir, you're writing a solo show, you're writing a story that you're gonna be sharing in a speech, or you're writing stories that serve your, you know, your business, your online brand, whatever it is. If you can, if you can hit uh, uh, some of these, these pieces, and it may not be all at once, um, and, and move towards, move your story towards this integration, um, there's tr tr tremendous wisdom in that, a tremendous um, need in the culture to hear those stories. And I wanna say that ultimately, one of the things I say, particularly when I'm coaching people on a full memoir or a one person show is the best narratives are both the hero's journey and the heroine's journey. So we have the adventure in the world. We all want a cinematic narrative. We all want a page turner. You know, if you're watching a solo show, I want, you know, I want to be on the edge of my seat and know what's next. And the hero's journey, in many ways, the natural structure of that moves us along on a riveting adventure as we're meeting ourselves in life and the world, encountering obstacles. But it's the heroine's journey underneath that gives it depth and gives it gravitas and, and really then is not just an entertaining story, but actually story as soul retrieval, story as evolutionary awakening, story as a healing tool. Uh, I hope this was helpful and I hope you're inspired to go check out more on both uh, the hero's journey and the heroine's journey. If you want to find me, again, my name is Tanya Taylor Rubenstein, and I'm the founder of Story Leader Global. Come check us out. Bye-bye. Thank you.